Good afternoon, flock. It's Wednesday, the 24th of April, 2019, 12:16 p.m. RSP Ministries. It is accomplished. The kingdom within is a pineal gland and the double helix DNA, the caduceus. The pineal is the progenitor for the activation of 97% of DNA that lies dormant. Junk DNA later preceded the dormant DNA, but they actually did call it junk. Until men change, kingdoms will not change. Jesus is referring to man's inherent nature. Curious that it is evil, self-sustaining, self-gratifying, survive at all costs. This is man's animal nature on this organic plane. Fear comes from not knowing anything. Does this suggest that at one point we did know everything? I suggest it does. And at least we were symbiotic with he that does. If it doesn't, then why do we feel a void? At least one bloodline does, and a fervent passion to find our Creator. And this path, unless led by the Holy One, shall lead to much despair. Even when led by His Spirit, this world is not my kingdom, will become more and more apparent. This is why Father told us, I am taking my life's breath out of you after 120 years. Why? Same reason that Jesus told Nicodemus that you must be born again of water and spirit. That which is flesh is flesh, but that which is spirit is spirit. Unless you are born again of the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom. Why? Because the kingdom doesn't host organic. There's a new element in town, Aether. And most were taught that we were banished from the garden. Nothing is further from the true truth. We were rescued from the garden. Here's why. After the enemy accomplished his task of getting us to eat of the tree of knowledge that resulted in a host of maladies, 97% dormant DNA, see less than 1% of the color spectrum, dual brain hemispheres warring with each other 24-7, faith or fear. He was then off to unveil his master plan. Once we were governed, Magnetite clusters around your pineal gland, so you are cut off from the aether, not in tune with the uni one first song, out of tune with his one song, cut off from the vine, energy and frequency wise, by the placing of magnets around your DNA progenitor, the pineal gland, separating you from God, fall of man. But this was not the enemy's master plan just yet. To completely separate you from God, He would have to make you live forever. Then, and only then, would you never be able to enter heaven. If your spirit could never be freed from the organic prison, the enemy would have you in this realm of duality forever. Eating of that second tree, the tree of life, would accomplish this. But notice what our Father does. He doesn't come down to the garden when we agree to become slaves. But look what happens when word reaches heaven regarding this tree of life business and the enemy trying to steal God's children. All of them would inherit this immortality. Every generation would be the enemy with no hope of ever finding the Father who the one bloodline is programmed to find without fail. To death is his quest. Look, they are as smart as we are now after the tree of wisdom lest they reach out and take the tree of life and live forever. Father knew and showed up in the garden, rescuing all of man from immortality in hell. He was a bit ticked. The enemy had threatened to take his children, all of them, forever. Listen to what he tells the enemy. Because you have tricked woman from a woman, your defeater will come. And while you strike at his heel, crucifixion of Jesus, but a temporary wound, he shall strike your head and take him back of the keys of death and hell. Reader, pay attention. He then goes on to say, and I will put enmity, blood feud, between your Satan's offspring and her, 
Eve's line of Seth, offspring. Did you get that flock? Satan has a bloodline, offspring, in this realm. And those of the line of Seth have a blood feud against them. But I shall end with this random thought. If heaven comes down as written, then is it the believers who get taken away? Or is it the other bloodline that gets sucked into infinity by the neutron star? I saw the dead in Christ rise first, scripture today. And I've been taught that it means those who believe in Christ but are dead when he returns. Today, it hit me a bit different. Dead in Christ? Whether I'm living or not, I'd like to be thought of as alive in Christ, you know? Just perhaps on this bizarro timeline, it means the non-believers. I mean, if the new Jerusalem comes down, there has to be a purification of the joint. Yes? Hey, wait, I believe that's just what's on the apocalyptic menu. Day of purification, coming up. Love God, love each other. Post script. If you watch Chris Cornell's Black Hole Sun video, you will see the plastic people getting sucked up. It's quite awesome.